Hey everyone, it's Simon. And this is Martina. And we're broadcasting out of Kichijoji, Tokyo, Japan, the secret part of Tokyo. <laughs> it's not that secretive. <laughs> I wanted... Considering we tell everybody about it. Okay, so this secret of ours is between you and me, the audience, uh-huh. the listener, yes. the viewer. Mm-hmm. But today... We had a bit of a rude awakening. Something I know what you're talking about now. Something that really scared me in a way. Yeah. When we came home today, <laughs> our grandma neighbor, who we love. I love her like she's family. She's yep. a grandmother I almost wanted. Yeah. She's a very... She's the grandmother you almost wanted? Always wanted. Did I say oh, almost? you said almost wanted. Always wanted. Okay. I, I've always wanted a grandmother like her. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. And when we saw her today, like we usually see her outside of the house. And then she's like, oh. And we were telling like a temp... You always talk about the weather yeah. in Japan. So I was like, oh, mushy, mushy, mushy. And then... You know, like, oh, it's humid. She wound up saying, hey, uh, I spoke with somebody who knows who you are and the two of us were like because up until now we've managed to just avoid talking about our jobs we just tell them like hey we like to travel around we just look like rich white people with eccentric habits like we don't look like we actually have a job because everyone's like how are you home all the time it, like from outside perspective it doesn't yeah. look like no we it's have more a job. like how are you home all the time and then suddenly not home yeah. for like giant chunks of time exactly like, why are you up at this time and why are you asleep at this time like what is your schedule about so now she knows she's like oh the person that i spoke with knows who you are and he says, you're very famous YouTubers. And she looked us straight in our hearts and souls when we said that. And we were like, and it just, I, I felt so gutted. And I'm like, ah, my secret, you know, now, you know, please don't tell anyone else. No. And we asked her and we said, you know, oh, was it, was it like a foreigner you were talking to? And she uh-huh. said, no, no, no. He's a Japanese man. And then we Whoever were like, you are that told my sweet grandma, my secret identity. How dare you out me to my neighbors? And, how uh, dare you? She goes to us. He knew a lot about you. Yeah. And we were like, oh, like what? Oh. Like tucking our hair behind our ears. And she's like, oh, he knows that you lived in Korea and you were there uh-huh. for eight years. And right. You make video about a lot of food. And we were like, all right. Uh-huh. The problem is that we kind of just wanted our neighbors to think of us as just normal people just, just normal we're strange divine. people we're strange in the way that we like travel around a lot and whatnot but don't look anymore into that just leave our secret identities alone i mean you don't really know about your what your neighbors personally do sure. like you don't really sit i mean unless you're one of those people who like opens up the curtains and they're like mm-hmm. 5 a.m this uh-huh. person came home but right. like i mean most of the time you just see your neighbors in the streets you're like hey how's it going yeah. and like you just kind of you know you assume that they are teachers or they work for like no, but a i company. feel like we know a lot more about our neighbors than they know about us like i know that like our other neighbors have like daughters in school that just graduated from university but it's also pretty easy to tell when we run into them on the street and yeah. they're having a jovial moment they want to share with us sure like when one of our neighbors um daughters was graduating from high school they right. were all outside taking photos and she's like oh graduating high school today we're like yay uh-huh. like so it's easy to take part in that when there's an event but we're not like Hey guys, we're we're um we're flying to Korea for this event. Yeah, like you don't just bring that no, up. No, we don't. We don't tell people. So the reason why this scares me is because I remember when we were in Korea, mm-hmm. um, when people didn't like some of our videos, they tried to call immigration on us mm-hmm. and get us deported. Mm-hmm. And I don't want my video life impacting my personal life now. And I, we do our best to try to contribute to mm-hmm. the community here, like with the restaurants around here. Like we had that wonderful experience at Light Up Coffee recently. Uh, and like I want to be part of this community and to think that there are some viewers that kind of know who we are, where we are and like talking to our neighbors about it. It, it worries me just a very small bit. I know it's not going to be the same because we're not talking about K-pop when we don't have like very yeah. angry fans People aren't that like, are very defensive. Sushi, we're going to deport you. <laughs> I don't think anybody gets that upset about a cheese sandwich yeah. the way they get upset about their opas. Yeah. But this is just like having her know had made me flutter a little bit in panic. I just saw for your a face. Bit. I was really nervous. Even now I'm kind of like, hey, just please, just please. No, I'm, so, I'm so nervous. I love it here. This is my favorite neighborhood I've ever lived in. I love our community. Mm. I love the people that we speak with. I love how when I'm in the backyard and I'm like trying to get hype before I squat and I'm listening to X go and give it to you and I'm like punching my paws like, Ugh! and then I turn around and I see my neighbors coming in like, oh, and I got to take out my head, <laughs> headphones. <laughs> I'm not really that gangster. Hello. Oh, I have some omiyagi for you. She's like, I love that last omiyagi you brought me. Oh, from Thailand we brought her from some. From Thailand. Yeah. And she just loved them. She oh, like, good. I saw her yesterday and she was like, they're so crispy. 
she has, and I just feel like I want to maintain that relationship and I'm so worried about anything getting in the way of jeopardizing that. Well, I do think that you're being a bit extreme. Maybe. Um, maybe. I don't think you have to worry about it because it's not like it's going to spread around the neighborhood and then everyone's going to stare at us in a weird way. Okay. It's not like we film at Because people our, already stare at us in weird yeah, ways. Yeah, people, I mean, I've got pink weird. hair, you've got uh-huh. tattoos with ducks. Uh-huh. Like, we already... Whack, <laughs> whack, We already stand out as is. Like, uh-huh. it's not like that's a problem. Uh-huh. I think our concern is more so... Or be like, oh, you mean those four foreigners we'll with like, pink hair and tattoos you mix them up oh you must have had us confused Wrong the other one. Four. no there's other ones we look alike yes, I, I understand know. no i think if anything for our neighbor it made more sense to her because when i said to her mm-hmm. you know that's why we're traveling so much she went Wakata, because i think she was wondering what kata means like i understand yeah. i think she was always like why are they always going to like Kyoto or right. really weird places like Ahime is yeah. not like a tourist destination where all like... It ain't the most bumping part yeah, of Japan. it's fantastic. It's my orange love. But yes. it's not like you say to somebody, oh, I'm going to go to Japan and I'm going to go to Ahime and I'm going to mm-hmm. go to Utsu and I'm going to go to... Like people have like specific destinations that right. tourism would say that they go to. Exactly. We don't personally agree with that. We yeah. think you should explore these places. And we're trying to promote these other places. But I think when we say to our neighbor, mm-hmm. oh, we brought you back these oranges from Ahime. She's like, why are, why are you in Ahime? Ahime? like now it kind of makes sense to her yeah when it comes to like the japanese like news covering Mm -hmm. foreign youtubers in japan there's one mega asshole that made the news here and he's a foreigner and he's a white guy and i don't want to be kind of conflated or associated like i don't want a neighbor to think hey are we doing the same kind of ridiculous shit yeah that idiots do when they come to japan yeah i'll be like i i don't know how to convey to her no i'm i'm not like this person i'm a special kind of idiot i'm I'm, I'm a differing breed of idiot just not that and then it cuts to like our mario gold car video where we were you know and then it cuts to bakurai and then it cuts and then we're like so that 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 made me a little scared and that's the story i'm gonna tell for you today Uh that's it i'm gonna go around and hide no you're not stop it we're gonna tell everyone everyone about okonomiyaki and (gasps) okonomiyaki coffee jelly coffee jelly okay yesterday we went on an adventure we went on an adventure yesterday um we both had not eaten like high carby meals all day so we Mm -hmm. were like nighttime it's time to have our delicious meal right i have to burp well we said we wouldn't edit it but this is the second but we already added (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I have to burp, so I had to cut it. Anyhow. I'm going to keep that in the video. Ugh. Everyone's going to see your gross burp. The other one's going out. Gross. Anyhow, we you didn't see to Martina go. fart 10 seconds ago. God damn, shook the house. That edit that you just saw, that was her shitting her pants. That's going to be cut also, isn't it? It's not going to be cut, but we all know <laughs> the truth of who would possibly <laughs> fart on camera that would cause the house to rock. Spurgy. Well, I'm a swooper. Don't burn me into this. Podcast oh, listeners. no me freaking yes. yaki. Uh-huh. Actually, I could drop the F-bomb now that it's not on a radio show. <gasps> no, but it's still going on YouTube. Family and friends. Yes. Okay, so Okonomiyaki. <laughs> we filmed an original video a long time ago about like how to eat, okon- how to like cook Okonomiyaki. Right. Um, and that was in Shibuya. And mm. that place closed down for a while right. um, for construction. I'm not sure if it's back up yet or not. I, I think it's back up because your parents were down last May and we were going to take them for Okonomiyaki there. That and was in it was, May. Yeah, so it should yeah, be up by now. It had like a big thing. The whole block was being like reconstructed. Um, well, my parents came last May. It's been like well over a year. It feels like they were here recently. I know. Wow. I know. So. Yes. This has been a fast flying year. <laughs> yes, it has. Um, so anyhow, we went for Okonomiyaki in Kishijoji and it was a shop that I found by accident. So mm-hmm. like, as you know, I have my Google map addictions where I zoom into my maps. I'm like, and 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 I like look at all the places around it and then I check to see the reviews and then uh-huh. I start to my list. And by fluke, I happened to find this place and you and I couldn't find it. Right. We were walking around going, where the heck is this place? And we couldn't find this months ago. Like mm-hmm. we now know it as like a staple for us. Yeah. Turns out it was an old school Japanese house. Right. In the midst of Kichi Joji. So you've got Yodobashi, this like huge electronic, electronic store shop. that's it's like everywhere. The, you think of it like a Best Buy, you could yeah. say. It's yeah. like a Best Buy or like kind of like Walmart sized electronic Except store. Except it's like seven stories tall. Yeah. And they have them all over Japan. So yeah. this is like being next to an Ikea. Mm-hmm. So you've got this gigantic like corporate building and then beside it there is one remaining house. tiny Japanese house yeah. and there's other shops that are all built up you know but this was one tiny little house so Simon and I went into it one day we were feeling very hesitant and concerned like what is this and we slid it open we're like are we going into someone's house mm-hmm. um, but we saw hello? people hello do you have food feed me please I'm hungry oh it's those YouTubers oh <laughs> damn the ones that ripped into K-pop oh, kick them no, out deport them <laughs> <laughs> all of our nightmares come uh. together Anyhow, so we went inside and we realized it was a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And um, we walked down this hallway and you have to imagine to the left of you, there are little tiny half curtains. And 
people's feet are just sticking out little yeah. tiny socks and shoes and bare mm-hmm. feet and all the shoes are stacked up on the wall mm-hmm. and you turn the corner and there's pictures up on the wall that look like it's somebody's house and mm-hmm. they have like a rain frog where you pull out the stick and you yeah. go like up its back has nothing to do with any theme for the rest of the restaurant whatsoever no. and then you turn up this narrow narrow staircase uh-huh. and it's the only place we've ever sat is upstairs You're and right you go up this there. gigantic staircase mm-hmm. and i'm like what have i done uh-huh. but it's worth it because the top floor is a completely open concept japanese house yep so they've got it is all on yeah, the ground all tatamis it's only they, floor seating there they've gotten rid of the like sliding no dividing walls or anything right. it's just one giant open floor oh mr spudster is up are you going to take a shit right Wait, here? Where are you going, buddy? Do it. Oh, oh, he's down. I fell. He's not sure where he's going to go. Hell, I'm taking a shit. Well, we'll see what happens to him. All right. Make it, buddy. Nah, 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 nah. If he does take a shit, that will stay on camera. <laughs> it will. We promise you. We it promise. Will. You won't see it because he goes over there. But So it's totally open yes. concept upstairs. Totally open concept. And all the tables are super low to the ground, like sitting tables. And they all have hot griddles on them. And mm. then we were like, holy cow, this is an Okonomiyaki restaurant. Right. So at the time, this was last year and it was the winter time. I yeah, remember yeah. we didn't read Japanese well enough. Like no. we could read it, but yeah. it was still a struggle. Uh-huh. And the whole menu was in Japanese. And the two of us were like, bam, 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 bam. But we just didn't know what to do, um, right? Um, Food. Food. We like pointed at things, you know. But uh-huh. now when I opened it up and I looked at the menu, it was so crystal clear. Yep. Like we're nowhere near being fluent in no, Japanese. No, no, no. Like, Not at all. No, but we've been working really hard on like our reading and food skills. And it was such a satisfying feeling to be like, uh-huh. I know exactly what this is yep. and so i ordered the mixed sea okonomiyaki yep. that one comes with a squid shrimp pork and ginger and you ordered a bucket of cheese I on the side i didn't mean to a full bucket it wasn't a bucket it was like a plate it like was too much but it was just way too much cheese Popping for that cheesy. one thing if the container of okonomiyaki came in like a a cup like around the size of your palm mm-hmm. um the cheese was equal which doesn't make sense yeah. that you should have an equal amount of Just cheese to batter way too much cheese yeah plus we went there to be healthy because okonomiyaki uh-huh. is made with mostly tororo like a ground and cabbage. yam and cabbage yeah. uh-huh. there's like an egg but yeah. everything else in it is not like a heavy flour the based. second one that we wound up getting is a stamina done i don't know why they're called stamina but it's mostly with just like fried pork and like eggs uh, stamina but we had that one the stamina has f- become like a normal phrase in Japan like we'll go for gyudon bowls and they'll be like satamina don and they we're like what is this don. they have stamina, stamina udon. udon we just had at our udon shop the thing that I really liked about this okonomiyaki mm. place was we've never been there in like the dead heat of the summer so you go upstairs and all the windows are completely open. Like yep. there, there's no screens there. It's like wide open outside. We sat to the wall closest to the Yodobashi. The so we could shape. overlook mm-hmm. the people walking uh, on the street beside us. Mm-hmm. And there's all these vines that are that yep. have grown on the side of the building that are curling into the open window on the second floor. And I sat in the perfect spot because I had my back to two fans. I think they had maybe like 12 fans yep. all peppered around there because there's no ventilation no going AC. on here whatsoever and it's just all these fans blowing my beautiful european bo <laughs> at every person actually there. we were lucky because you just took a shower you just finished working out i did just so take you a were shower. super fresh and excited. but girl as soon as i step outside for half an hour you know the sweats are coming back you sweat but you don't smell anymore I know. our diet has changed a lot yeah like i think that we when we were in korea mm-hmm. our smell went from being north american to more korean yeah and so it got better yeah. because korean people also don't wear like deodorant it was right. actually harder to find deodorant in korea than it True. was japan yeah um but i think we did start to develop a kimchi garlicky one uh-huh. kind of like how our european um cousins have like yeah. a sausage Sausage-y like a, a smell of, yeah and if you're like really hardcore indian and you eat a lot of curried food you uh-huh. might have more of like a curry smell there's like very specific is this supposed to be racist or something i don't know because like i i no, don't just i don't know if this like, is sensitive or not because i know that like different people that i know like whatever culture you grow up but they yeah. like different cultures have different, different smells, smells this yeah. isn't a bad thing i hope it's not a bad no, thing we're european say. we're the ones that smell like bo yeah. like all the other cultures smell like a food it's like oh no curry would you we're rather like... smell like food or body odor yeah. i'd rather smell like food. food yeah that's a good thing i don't know anymore well, anyhow, with the we sensitivities don't mean it in that way. of people but here's the thing uh-huh. we have we have to stop being afraid to talk about things that have affected us personally mm-hmm. like what we've i've noticed with us is that like for a while they're online Mm-hmm. We were talking about things from a perspective of like, well, this is what happened to us in Korea. Uh-huh. You know, like when we did TLDR from the get go and people yeah. would be like, you're lying. Uh-huh. And we're like, that's weird because I'm not yeah. like, I mean, I remember we had arguments on our TLDRs about prostitution where yeah. we were talking about the cards delivered and yeah. there was a Korean guy that like stalked our videos and was yeah. like, you're lying. 
There's no prostitution in Korea. There's no cards on the ground. You're just making this up. And I'm like, this is weird. Yeah. Because I didn't want prostitution cards. Like, right. I didn't want to. Why would we Why make would I that want up? these? Yeah. Right. And so like the same thing when we talked about having no bathtub in our houses. Like mm-hmm. if you come to Korea as a foreigner, mm-hmm. you will experience it as a foreigner. Yeah. You will experience it differently. And foreigners have a very different experience than Korean people. Yeah. Do. If you're born in Korea, you're probably born in an apartment. Apartments have bathtubs and yeah. balconies. Right. So like a Korean person can never understand what it is to be a foreigner in um, Korea, the same sure. way how if a Korean person goes overseas to New York right. or, or Florida or wherever, yeah. they will always have an experience that's true to them. You can't say to somebody, you didn't experience racism as a Korean person in America. Yeah. No one's racist. And they're like, um, dude, uh-huh. like we've heard our friends, Jen and stuff tell us, oh, like yeah. they're like, we got totally made fun of. Imagine yeah. saying to them, no, you that didn't. Exist. Yeah, I know. So like we're European. We have European family members. We know what they smell like. Sure. My grandmother, my yeah. dad. Like, yeah. I know the smell that comes with it. Right. We lived in Korea for eight freaking years. We there know... is a smell in Korea as well. Yeah. It's not like you walk into Korea and you go, oh, God. Can All you? right. Okay, yeah. fine. So don't. So we just had a long enough disclaimer now that yes. I think that we've calmed down anybody's potential rage. It's not a disclaimer. I'm just uh-huh. saying that I want everybody who has an experience to mm-hmm. be able to share it. I don't want them to say, this is the only truth experience. And mm-hmm. that's something that we've never done. We've never said this is the facts about Korea or these are the facts about European people and no one could tell me otherwise. We're just like, hey, this is what we feel. And then mm. people get mad as if we're authority. Like yeah. we've never said anything about authority. Even when we review a K-pop video, we'd mm. be like, this song sucks. And people are like, you're the worst. Set them on fire. I'm like, dude, you can like it. Mm-hmm. I know that you're very like gung-ho. Just like say what you feel like. Mm, I, no, I, I, I still feel it. It's yeah. not like I don't feel it because I definitely, you know, I've had stages in the YouTube career where I was mm-hmm. like, I don't think I can take this anymore. Sure. And I managed to push past that because of our amazing community. Like uh-huh. if it wasn't for the people supporting us, it would have been like, we're done. I mean, I just can't be, I can't really anymore think about the seriousness of somebody being mad that I ripped into a music video directed by a director that had nothing to do with the K-pop. Like to Mm -hmm. me, I'll still never be able to make these like connections Uh between the idea that the person who's in the K-pop band has literally zero to do with this music video. Uh It's like... It's like making fun of a Justin just, Bieber video. They just act in it, but they're they not just the ones act that in scripted it. it. I not, know. It's not their idea. It's not their mission. It's not their vision no. that they're trying to convey. I mean, 100%. They don't even know that they just show up and it's they act in it. It's a director that's just like, hey, I need you to look sexy. Do the sexy thing. And the directors, right we mm-hmm. met. Yeah. And those directors watched our videos and said they were hilarious. So uh-huh. if the director's not mad and uh-huh. the K-pop stars we meet in person and they say, yeah, we're not mad. It's funny. Yeah. Then why are the fans mad? Hey, let's talk about something that won't get people mad. Poor coffee. scared Simon. Coffee jelly is really nice. I like coffee jelly. Okay, let's rock. Let's wrap up okonomiyaki All in right. a positive manner. Okay. Oh, look at your little wopsies rubbing together. He's so tartled. Yeah. It's the same when I make him speak Polish on the radio. <laughs> Every week, how can Martina make me feel One uncomfortable? One more thing. Tell me that I'm pretty in Polish. Uh, how do you say pretty? Ty jesteś piękna. <laughs> That's such a beautiful word, isn't it? Bam, bam. Is that the word for pretty? Uh, piękna, I think, means uh, like beautiful. Yeah, piękna. Urocha, I think cute. You're cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Seki. You're welcome, love. There you go. Thanks. So our okonomiyaki was amazing. Uh-huh. We grilled it, and as the breeze blew in, and I went, summer breeze makes me feel fine. I was like, this is a great memory. Mm-hmm. I just... No one can take that sitting upstairs patio feeling and that feeling of the wind blowing over us, the warm breeze, the heat coming off of the grill, mm-hmm. but like the kind of cool circulation. Right. We were saying how it also reminds us of those amazing memories from Buchan mm-hmm. when we were outside grilling at a barbecue on the side of the road. Right. And you'd have like a warm breeze blowing the flames and up. This was like the closest experience that we had to like kind of like eating outdoors yeah. in Japan. We missed the eating outside yeah, thing. That was a really fun. It's the same way how when we go back to North America, we miss backyard barbecues mm-hmm. and patios. Like people are like, I'm having a backyard barbecue we're like really for real like in the movies mm-hmm. like <laughs> we haven't never gone to a friend's outdoor barbecue because we left we left canada yeah, I know. when we were all broke uh-huh. like all of us were in university who would have a house and be able to have a backyard barbecue mm-hmm. now our friends are coming on like their second babies and they could literally invite us to their outdoor barbecue yep so we're kind of trapped in it no in we a did way. that last time we were in canada no two times ago when we were in canada we visited our friends in milton we had a backyard barbecue we did place. our friends from korea there you go our <laughs> korean friends as if we can't have just a normal and canadian made- experience Korean food. I know we ate Korean food and we talked Mm. about Korean food the whole time. So like it was not a normal like I want to go to a barbecue where it's like uh hey I'm Martina. I'm uh Simon's wife. And you're like, oh I'm 
Marianne why do you sound Sue. like uh, somebody from the Mad Men era? This is how I talk. Me. As soon as I come to when I come Meh. when I come to Canada, I immediately switch into like an awkward white person voice, and I don't realize it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you always have an awkward white person voice. <sighs> You're super awkward white people. Both Sp- of us. Spudgy buddy, where you going? Spudgy can take a shit on the ground yet. Okay. Last story. Last story. Coffee, coffee jelly. jelly. Give we, your background information as to why you like coffee jelly first. I really wanted to try coffee jelly because yep. we're watching a show on Netflix mm-hmm. called so, The uh, Disastrous Life anime. of Psyche K. Yeah. Uh, and it's this hilarious anime <laughs> about a guy that's a ridiculously overpowered psychic that just wants to have a normal life. And one of the mm. things that he really enjoys is coffee jelly. And he just goes to great extent to enjoy coffee jelly. Without these friends around. He just wants to enjoy it on his own. And his friends keep on getting in the way. I never tried coffee jelly. Not just that. You and I went, what the heck is coffee jelly? Right. Like, again, when we start our videos, sometimes we'll say things like, you've heard about sushi, you've heard about this, but have you heard of curry uh-huh. in Japan? Right. I didn't know Japan had curry. I didn't know Japan had, had coffee, coffee jelly. jelly. What is coffee jelly? We finally found it. What We weren't yep. exactly looking for it. We just like walked around Kichijoji yes. and we found this like really old yeah. looking like sign for a shop. It just looked totally run down. It looked like a New York diner. Like. And we saw all of the pictures of the food outside and we read one of them and it said Kohi Jelly. And, and the two thought, of us were like, this is our chance yeah. to go. So we walk downstairs, these really old crack stairs. You know what the stairs reminded me of? Like, linoleum from like an old high school. I was school. about to say linoleum. Yeah, like it was yellow. Exactly. Linoleum. With w- fake marbling where it looks like it's supposed to be. We went into this like cafe deep downstairs. And, the, and as I said to you, yeah. and I quote, uh-huh. this looks like the kind of place you wouldn't go at like 9 p.m. on no. a Sunday because there's a gang member dealing out drugs. Like this it, was like not it, safe looking. L- it didn't look what like what we're used to here in Kichijoji. It yeah. definitely the closest equivalent I could think of is is like a New York diner. Our 80s like, dance hallway. Everything in there was just like faded Glass pastel from the past, kind man. of like a muted Arizona palette yeah. without the blues. Everything there was like these like tan leather seats with like dirty green backings on it the, and they the, had you know the one all that's like picture, almost mint but not quite it's like a faded mint they had these picture frames on the wall and the pictures inside of them were a lot smaller than the frame itself but there was all glass so the reflection from the light covered it so you couldn't actually see what any of the pictures yeah. were in between like us and the other side in there the were booth these, in between our booth in the booth there were these like little like frosted yeah. glass dividers to make it look like we're separate. There was a so smoking. That you don't, so you don't look at somebody. Oh my gosh. There's a smoking and non-smoking section here. As if it matters. Divided by a sign. Like, <laughs> is the sign protecting me from the smoke? Halt. In Japan, our sign technology is above yours, North America. But it just looks super dingy and run down. And I loved it. And here's the thing that I want to say for mm-hmm. all y'all Star Trek nerds out there. Uh-huh. When we stepped through these doors, it was a sliding glass door that led us into this 1980s, 90s diner. Mm-hmm. I thought this is like entering the holiday. Mm -hmm. When there's those scenes where they go to like Paris 1940s or like New York 1920s, Jean-Luc Picard has all these weird programs where he's like a detective and stuff. Uh And when you walk through the holodeck, you step out of like modern technology into the past. And this is exactly how that felt. But Mm -hmm. the weird part was when I looked around with the customers, it was like a very mixed bag crowd. There was Uh like a three party of women behind us that were definitely drunk. They were like hilariously drunk, like, and they were older. Mm -hmm. They were like in their fifties. And then to the left of me, um, there was one single guy, Uh good looking guy in his mid twenties that was working on something with headphones on. I'm like, you know, hanging out at the local 1990s diner. Mm -hmm. And then two people came in halfway through the night and you said to me, they look like two New York artists that just walked in. Yep. And they had like little glasses with like cool hats. They had a little guitar case with yeah, them. Yeah, and I'm like, this is, why is anyone coming here? So we ordered coffee jelly yep. for myself. Uh, and you ordered like a super traditional like red bean. Yeah, clear co- jelly, agar clear jelly. Clear jelly uh, kind matcha of thing. and like a wafer. And the coffee jelly came out. It was like maybe like two to three inches of coffee it's jelly. A cup. In this parfait cup. And then like Four inches of soft serve ice cream on top yeah. of it. I didn't want all that ice cream. I just wanted to try the Oh, yeah. Jelly. I was like, oh, no. And I tried it. It's just like the taste was so surprising. Yep. It was like it just tasted like black coffee made into jello. Mm-hmm. And it was delicious. I loved it. I loved it. And you know how I feel. Like yeah. when I explain to people in the in the ice cream challenge video that I don't right. like coffee flavored things. It's not that the latte ice cream, like the gelato that I had, didn't taste good. I thought it tasted good. Yeah. It's just that it's the equivalent of me of having like an icy cap from Tim Hortons. Yeah. When you go to Tim Hortons and you have like an iced cappuccino, uh-huh. 
it tastes good, but it doesn't taste like coffee. It tastes right. like sugar coffee flavor. Yeah. Like a Frappuccino doesn't taste like coffee. Yeah. Or like chocolate. Like it's just, it's like just sugar, cream, yeah, and a little good. bit of flavor. It's delicious. Yeah. It's just, it's not coffee. But this, this was tastes literally like coffee. just coffee gelatinized. Except you can't just do that because I know how hard it is to make like gelatinized coffee uh-huh. because it would separate. Like there, so it's I don't amazing. know how they did it. Right. It was just amazing because it was like this beautiful parfait cup with this beautiful mm-hmm. layers of like firm jelly. Like right. Japan likes its former jelly uh-huh. instead of just having like a kind of feeling. It was more like a. Yeah. Like you have to kind of rip it. did have a good it. bite to it. Yeah. And the soft serve ice cream on oh. top of it was stellar. Stupid There good. were no ice crystals in it. It no. was super ridiculously smooth. And I, as I was eating this, I thought to myself, I was a little bit upset because mm. this is way too good for a diner gotcha. this run down. Because like whenever we go back to Canada, we sometimes have hankerings for dirty old diners. You know, the dirty like old spoon where yeah. you go there and the waiter's like, what do you want? And like, they like wipe their hand on the Exactly. You know. Like you want your like tater tots completely burnt. You want your Bainable ketchup diner, expired. You, know, yeah. you want, you know, the cake the grill. to be crusted over on the side from dryness. Like you're expecting kind of a low quality to it. And that's part of the experience. Yeah. Here, that's what I was expecting. I wanted something low quality, but everything yep. here was so damn good. It kind of took me out of this whole dirty diner vibe. Not just that. You keep saying the word dirty diner, mm-hmm. but I do not think you know what that word means. Uh-huh. This was not dirty. No, it wasn't dirty. It was as dirty as we could find in Japan. <laughs> it was the closest no, equivalent. No, no, no. Well, we can find dirt. If we want dirty, we just go to Shinjuku and we go to like Shibuya at like 4 a.m. on the weekend and we'll find like gross vomity like you know new york style that'll be there but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about a a normal average neighborhood has none of that Uh it just doesn't have any of that right it's like way too clean so this dirty diner Mm -hmm. was basically like it looked like one that was made for a movie set yeah and then later on they scuffed it up so Uh that people could make it look dirty and we had just stepped in between like rolls like right it that's how it felt clean wise like mm-hmm. when you see archie comics and they have these beautiful red back diner chairs and they're in a city in the middle of nowhere you're like that's got rips on it mm-hmm. there's parts of like the foam puffing out and like a spring up your butt uh-huh. but this but everyone's has these perfect dirty diners mm-hmm. it was like a movie set point is i had my first coffee jelly and it was great thoroughly enjoyed it i'm definitely going to try to find some more coffee jellies from now yeah. on and I think that's going to be my new thing in yeah. Japan. My let, new, us know, my new favorite let us know if dessert. you guys want us to make you like a video about this because I don't know how much I can I'm not sure how say. well this you're going to really sell. Like, coffee it's jelly. Coffee jelly. Like Do coffee. you like coffee jelly? It's coffee know. jelly. Like give us some suggestions if you guys think of like a, an idea mm. of what we can do with the coffee jelly videos. And I also like speaking of suggestions, thank you to, I forget what user it was that um, suggested this. I'm so sorry this. we didn't get your name. Um, but you actually, like you see our microphones actually sound a lot better now because we're pointing them the right way. Last time we pointed <laughs> it at our mouths and that was wrong. Somebody was so, like, this is this is the type of microphone you have, and you should be talking to it sideways. And the as, two of us were like... As you can see, we're still trying to learn about this whole yeah. podcasting thing. And thank you for watching us grow. Thanks for sticking with us. We will see you next week with some more stories to tell. Yes. Oh, that coffee jelly. That was really good. <gasps> that delicious, thick mouthfeel ice cream. I think it's time for dinner now, girl. It is time for dinner. I'm hungry. Yay. Yay. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye, guys. See you next week.